Good day and welcome to Conversations with AARP in the Virgin Islands. I'm Troy Deshaber Schuster, State Director of AARP in this territory. And as always, it's a pleasure to be with you today. Thank you for joining us. We welcome you to our conversation with Interim CEO of the Schneider Regional Medical Center, Tina Comision, talking about the services and future of the hospital. AARP, a nonprofit, nonpartisan member organization, has been working to promote the health and well being of Americans 50 plus for more than 60 years. Through its policies and advocacy, AARP remains committed to shaping conversations that support solutions to addressing issues that are most important to older Americans. AARP is particularly concerned about access to high quality, affordable health care for Virgin Islanders. Today's guest, attorney Tina Comision, will share her approach on leading Schneider Regional Medical Center during these complex times and the strides the hospital system continues to make in transforming health care in the territory. Welcome, Attorney Comision. A pleasant good day to you, Mr. Dishabair Schuster, and to all AARPVI members and to listening audience. Thanks for having me. I'm so happy to be here with you today. Yeah, thank you for being with us today. And I met you several years ago when I was on the hospital board of St. Croix Hospital uh, the Governor Wang F. Louis Hospital and Medical Center, and you were working at Schneider Regional. So tell us a little bit about your history with Schneider Regional and what you're doing now. Sure. Um, I'm currently serving as the interim chief executive officer at Schneider Regional Medical Center. I've been a member of our executive leadership team here for the past seven years. I'm a native Virgin Islander uh, who went away to school at Duke University and got my master's at New York University and then um, practiced in the States for a while in healthcare administration. Was very happy to come back home after completing my law degree to contribute all my skills and experience to improving healthcare here in the Virgin Islands um, and just bringing everything I could back home to work for our people. That's wonderful. And thank you for coming back home. As, as we all know, so many of our bright young Virgin Islanders leave and don't come back. Uh, so it's really refreshing to see that you've come back to to your home island of St. Thomas to to help all of your people, all of us here in the Virgin Islands. Thanks again. Thank you. Doing my part with a great team. Yeah, thank you. Yes, you do have a very great team. I've, I've experienced many of the uh, services at, at that hospital in St. Thomas Schneider Regional. I've had surgery there. Uh, I was always very impressed with with all of the care that I received, and um, you all are doing a great job. So it's really refreshing to know that that we have that great hospital here in the Virgin Islands. Thank you. Yes. And so hospitals are highly complex businesses, uh, whereby saving lives is a priority. Being interim CEO of the only safety net hospital in St. Thomas, St. John District, how are you leading your team in ensuring a balance between serving the patient and ensuring the overall financial health of the hospital? As we know, uh, the hospitals here in the Virgin Islands have had some financial um, challenges, but how are you working that balance there at Schneider Regional now? Yes, yeah, so Schneider Regional Medical Center is a very complex organization. We're comprised of three facilities functioning as one healthcare system. We're open to residents and visitors seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Our facilities include the Royal Lester Schneider Hospital, which is a licensed 169 bed acute care facility. We provide a wide range of services um, to address a diverse range of medical needs. Uh, we also run the Myra Keating Smith Community Health Center located on St. John, which provides 24 hour urgent care, as well as general and primary care and preventative care to the island of St. John and its residents. Um, and we have the Charlotte Car Kimmelman Cancer Institute, which is currently closed due to damages that were sustained by hurricanes Irma and Maria. But that is a state of the art, comprehensive uh, oncology, diagnostic and treatment facility. And we have a very talented workforce, as you mentioned. We're always on the front lines. We work through COVID, through the hurricanes, any other natural disasters. Um, being the only healthcare facility that's open at all times in our districts, um, we have to be open and provide that care at all times, no matter what's going on. 
Um, and then we really have a talented group of staff that oftentimes make personal sacrifices to ensure that our patients continue to receive the essential care they need, working together to deliver high quality clinical care to the community safely and efficiently. Um, and so I just can't overstate how amazing our staff has been and can't thank them enough for their tremendous efforts, especially through this recent uh, COVID pandemic. Of course, as you mentioned, the financial performance of a hospital is very important. Um, and so we're focusing on how we can improve our financial performance, working on our documentation, working on charging insurances, making sure we're billing appropriately, just to be sure that we're compensated for the excellent work that we do here. So we can continue to offer that wide range of services to the people of the Virgin Islands. Excellent. I know that that, that billing is always a huge task. I remember that from uh, the Governor Wang F. Louis Hospital here in St. Croix. And without proper billing, you can't get the money and you can't pay your bills and keep the hospital functioning. So I'm glad to hear that you're really focusing on, on the billing over there, especially the billing of insurance companies to make sure that the hospital is compensated for the great service it provides. It, just a moment ago, you mentioned the Myra Keating Smith Clinic in St. John. And we remember the hurricanes Irma and Maria. We know that both Schneider Regional and Myra Keating Smith had a lot of damages. Uh, I heard recently in the local news that that the federal government is giving monies to reconstruct the Myra Keating Smith Clinic. Can you tell us about that? Uh, what is the status of that? And what is the status of repairs or, or perhaps reconstruction of the Schneider Regional Medical Center? Sure, thank you. As you know, um, all three of our facilities were damaged during Hurricanes Irma and Maria, and we've been working through the process with the federal government um, to attain the reimbursement necessary to improve and, and upgrade and repair our facilities in the aftermath of those storms. Uh, while we have done continuous and ongoing improvements to our infrastructure in the interim, we are still waiting for that large determination so that we can move forward with the complete renovation and rebuilding of our facilities. On Myra Keating Smith, we have a temporary structure on St. John at the Myra Keating Smith site that we are currently off operating out of and offering a wide range of services there. We continue our clinic work there and we continue to provide 24 seven emergency care at Myra Keating Smith. Um, and as, as far as Schneider Regional Hospital itself goes, I mean, the Royal Schneider Hospital on St. Thomas goes, we are awaiting the final determination from FEMA as to a dollar amount. Um, but we have started through the efforts of the Territorial Hospital Redevelopment Team, led by Mr. Daryl Smalls, to start looking at what programming is appropriate and how the design will um, be for a hospital of the future so that we really have the best hospital possible uh, to serve our community. And Charlotte Kimmelman Cancer Institute is very dear to our hearts. We know how valuable it is to the community. Um, we're working diligently to get it back up and running as soon as possible. Uh, we have already engaged an architectural and engineering firm to look at the design plans, and we've engaged the staff, the clinicians, the providers who have um, worked in that center previously to see how we can improve upon the design so that our services are what we need to offer as we move forward in the future in terms of cancer care. Even though those doors are physically closed, we still are providing a number of services to the community. Our medical oncologists have stepped up and are expanding the services in their offices to keep essential treatments going. We still do infusion therapy here on site at the main hospital. Um, and we have our heart and lung clinic open doing some outpatient services there. We also have the Lynn Cohen Appearance Boutique, which was formerly in the cancer center proper operating out of our main hospital. So we're still providing the compression garments and specialty garment prosthetic fitting services that were previously offered. So to the extent we can, we have maintained full range of services at Schneider Regional. We have done that also at Myra Keating Smith in the temporary uh, hardened structure. And we're continuing to do what we can in terms of services for CKCI uh, through our operations here. You know, I've often wondered for patients in St. John who present at, at the Myra Keating Smith Clinic, if they need more acute care or in, intensive care, how are they transferred to St. Thomas? Is there a helicopter that goes back and forth? I've always wondered if there's a helicopter or is it just by boat? How, how does that work out? We do have a helicopter pad at the Myra Keating Smith location. However, the primary mode of transport between the Myra Keating Smith Clinic and the Royal Esther Schneider Hospital on St. Thomas is via ambulance boat. 
So we have a very close working relationship with EMS, which is run by the Department of Health, where they would uh, pick up the patient via EMS ambulance on St. John, transport them down to the dock, and then the patient comes over with a full team of EMS and other providers on the EMS boat to be met by EMS ambulance on St. Thomas and then transferred to our emergency room uh, for care here if they need additional care. And the whole time the patient is in transfer mode, there's constant communication between the providers in the clinic, the providers in route, and the providers here at the hospital, um, just ensuring that we are monitoring the patient as best as possible through the transit. Okay, excellent. That, that must be quite a, a process to, to move a, a patient that way, but it sounds like you have it worked out very well. So I'm sure that's a comfort to, uh, to the residents of St. John. According to the American Hospital Association, hospital CEOs have a tremendous impact on the lives of their constituents. As the interim CEO of the Schneider Regional Medical Center, what are some of your short-term goals uh, towards strengthening the hospital system and what are your next steps to growing Schneider Regional into a truly high-performing system? So I think we always have to continuously focus on our quality and our patient's experience here. I think that's really our top goal and priority. Uh, providing the community with a hospital and a health system that they can trust, that they have confidence in, is hugely important to me and the executive team here at Schneider Regional. And it's something we continuously push for. Uh, as you know, we're accredited by the Joint Commission and we're accredited by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. And so quality is always at the front of our focus and we do what we need to do to ensure that we can remain accredited and remain a safe place for our patients to come for care. Some of our other short-term goals include improving our emergency department services and the throughput there um, so that our patients have a timely experience when they come to the emergency department for care. Uh, as well as continuing to provide a wide range of outpatient services. We have a, a great laboratory here at Schneider Regional Medical Center. Uh, we also provide radiology services. We do, we do outpatient rehabilitation also and cardiac rehabilitation. We provide cardiology services through our heart and lung uh, center as well as pulmonar pulmonary services there. Um, and then I think just another constant goal for us is improve, improving our financial performance, staying on top of the revenue cycle, um, and a little bit of what we discussed earlier in terms of just making sure that we are collecting for everything that we do so that we can remain viable and so that we can expand our services. Now, the, the greatest challenge facing our community at this moment is the COVID-19 pandemic. Recently, the VI Department of Health announced the 104th death related to the coronavirus here in this territory. And while the number of positive cases has substantially diminished, the level of uncertainty continues to strain our hospital system and hospital systems across the country and around the world. How have you been able to remain care-centered and successfully implement your vision for the hospital while navigating through the pandemic? Yeah, the COVID pandemic has reshaped everything that we do in our lives generally. It's really changed um, a lot of, of our day-to-day -day living and our experiences. And we have really adapted well at SRMC. Uh, it's been two years since the first cases of COVID-19 were reported in the U.S. and yet the pandemic continues on. Um, it has created a significant impact on our personnel, on our expenditures, our overall operations really. Um, but SRMC's overall response to the pandemic has been exceptional. Um, and I think the key to our success has been that advanced planning and collaboration between our employees and physicians across all of the departments. So in January of 2020, SRMC successfully established a COVID-19 task force, which included representatives from all areas of our organization, including operations, administration, facilities, human resources, nursing, medical staff, the lab, the pharmacy, security, housekeeping, food services, led a lot by infection control and our performance improvement team. And that team met weekly since the start of the pandemic to guide SRMC's COVID response and to shape our preparation efforts with a specific focus being on ensuring the safety of our staff and our patients and just preparing our organization to accommodate the increased demand of patients seeking care due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so one of the important topics we talk about at Task Force is our visitation policy. We know that's really important to the community. Um, 
We recognize how important it is for patients to be surrounded by their loved ones during difficult times, such as hospitalization. Um, and we know that the family members want to be assured that their loved ones are being well taken care of while receiving care at our hospital. We have to balance that with patient safety. And so we had to develop policies that restricted visitation, um, of course, allowing for it on a case by case basis or in situations where there's a minor or a, a woman in labor um, it, where it is allowed. But aside from that, we really had to restrict our visitation to ensure that our patients and our staff uh, remain safe through the pandemic. We are getting ready to relax the visitation policy as we're seeing the territory's uh, positivity rate fall. And so when it gets to a level below about 2%, at that time, we're thinking to expand it where we would allow for some visitation um, with proof of a negative test or proof of vaccination. Um, and so we hope to resume that very soon. And what we've done in the meantime is though in-person visits have been restricted, we have started a very robust virtual visitation program. And so we've started to allow phone calls and FaceTime um, facilitated by the nurses and our, our, our team here to allow the family members who can't come physically into the building to still connect with their loved ones and see how care is going and communicate with the providers. So we open that up to your audience. If, if there's somebody who wants to visit with a patient or, or needs to learn more about this program, we welcome them to contact us at the hospital and we'd be sure to accommodate that as best we can. Yeah, I'm so glad to hear that you're making accommodations for the visitation because, as we know, there's much better outcome for the patient when surrounded by family members and people who, who are concerned about them and who bring levity and, and joy to them during the, their, their time of healing. And so at one point, there was a move here in the Virgin Islands to mandate vaccination for all nurses. And then uh, there was something that came out federally. Can you tell us about that? And what is the, the aftermath of that? Because I know there was some pushback from a, a lot of nurses. Sure. So there is a move in that direction, not just locally, but also nationally, including now CMS being very involved in mandating vaccinations at a certain level. I would say at Shatter Regional, we've been able to achieve substantial compliance with vaccination amongst our employees. We have approximately 90% of our staff being fully vaccinated. Um, and we can continue to encourage vaccination for all who can be vaccinated. And we continue to encourage boosters for all of our staff. Um, we really use a lot of education and discussion and open forums and one-on-one -on -one meetings with our staff members to encourage that compliance. Um, so we saw less fallout from persons who initially even were hesitant about, you know, needing to move in that direction. We were able to work through a lot of those issues and, and really it's best for our staff, best for our patients and just ensures that we ensures that we are an organization that's providing safe care and that we are in compliance with those national mandates. Yep. Now, I know you're not a physician, so you can answer this next question to the best of your ability. Uh, but in early on in, in the pandemic, there was this treatment, monoclonal antibody treatment uh, for COVID-19. And I've been seeing in the news that there are other treatments. Some of them are still in testing. Some of them are moving along the approval process. Do we have other treatments for COVID-19 here in the Virgin Islands other than monoclonal antibody treatment? Yes. So we do have some other uh, treatments that are available. We have started... Um, some more proactive types of treatments. Um, we did administer the MAP here. We continue to administer the monoclonal antibody treatments um, here at Shatter Regional. And we really want to encourage, though, um, the listening public and your AARP members to get vaccinated and to get boosted because that's how you, the public, can help us. The majority of people who sought care here um, were with COVID-19 were persons who were unvaccinated. Um, and so to the extent that people will get vaccinated and boosted, it helps us to be able to focus and, and, and have the space available to take care of the wide range of persons seeking care here. The other need for healthcare and for emergency services didn't go away with COVID. Um, they still are very present and we're the only hospital you know, on the island. So to the extent that we can help to manage our inpatient census by having less persons who are affected with COVID. It's it's better for everyone. And so we want to encourage your, your membership to get vaccinated and boosted. For sure. Yeah. At AARP, we're encouraging our membership and, and everybody to get 
vaccinated and boosted. And we hope that, that people are paying attention to that because there are certainly much better outcomes, even if you have a breakthrough uh, virus, uh, as long as you're vaccinated. Now, increased testing and enhanced contact tracing continue to be paramount to combating this pandemic, along with vaccinations, of course. Schneider Regional Medical Center has responded to a community-wide effort to fight the rising infection rates in the territory with the installation of its drive-through testing center. Please tell us about this drive-through testing center and other innovative initiatives at Schneider Regional Medical Center in response to COVID. Thank you. So Department of Health has really done a great job at doing community-wide testing um, and offering enhanced, that enhanced contact tracing that you referenced uh, for the community. And Schneider Regional Medical Center wanted to do its part in that effort also. And as part of that, we have established drive-through testing. Um, we did it early in the pandemic. And then when the rates in the territory and in the community subsided, we, we suspended that service. And then when the rates came back up with the Omicron variant, we resumed our drive-through testing services and we continue to offer it now. So in the front of the hospital, there is a way that you can drive up. There's a way for you to pre-register online um, where you put in all your information, you drive up, your testing is completed very efficiently. I think maybe less than 10 minutes, the whole process. And then you're able to drive away and get your results available for you to download within a reasonable time period of 24 hours, I think. So we have um, seen really good outcomes with starting that drive-through testing center in terms of helping persons get the tested when they need to. Additionally, our emergency department, as people present for care with more advanced symptoms or who really need emergency level assessment, we do offer COVID testing just for those more acute patients and anyone who presents really uh, at our emergency department. Our lab has state-of-the-art testing equipment. We have the Pantafusion system, and so we're able to do the highest quality of tests um, here at Schneider Regional. I know that historically and up to now, St. Thomas is very often a safety net for the British Virgin Islands, even for simple day-to-day -day things like, like grocery shopping and shopping for household items. Do you find that a lot of people come from Tortola and the other islands in the BVI to St. Thomas for healthcare at, at your hospital? And if so, have, have you been caring for patients with COVID from the BVI? We do offer and you know welcome then the residents of the BVI and our other neighboring islands who may want to seek care here at China Regional. We are definitely open to that and we treat anybody who presents resident or visitor um, for services here. And so we want to continue to encourage that relationship and to open that up to persons from neighboring islands who would like to come here to get their care. Especially when we reopen the Cancer Institute, uh, the fact that we have a state-of-the-art linear accelerator right here in, you know, St. Thomas that you can come to via ferry. It's so much more convenient for patients in the neighboring islands than having to fly, you know, to the mainland or elsewhere to get their care and really be away from loved ones at a very critical time. So to the extent that we can provide our services through our Cancer Institute when we reopen, we're definitely looking to do that. You mentioned earlier that you had a rather high vaccination rate among your nurses and your staff. Uh, have, did you lose any nurses and staff as you were on your way to getting that high vaccination rate? Were you able to retain uh, all of your staff? We were able to retain most of our staff. There were a couple of persons that it was amongst reasons why they left, but we didn't have any direct resignations or direct fallout because of that COVID. Uh, mandatory vaccination policy, which was supported and, and encouraged by our territorial board. Um, but that's really because we did everything possible to work with our staff through that process, to provide education from specialists where we could, um, to really give them the facts and give them time to think about it for themselves and to evaluate um, coming on board with the mandatory policy. And that really worked to help us avoid that follow. Excellent. I'm glad to hear that because I know that here on St. Croix, we, we lost several and now there are more and more traveling nurses and more traveling paramedics and so forth coming into the island. Uh, do, you, do you get a lot of travelers also coming to Schneider Regional Medical Center? Yeah, we have a lot of travelers um, across the nation, really. This is reflective of what's happening across the nation where healthcare staffing is one of the really primary concerns and issues and challenges that we're having right now. And they're calling it the great resignation of 2022 in terms of just the numbers of, 
of healthcare workers who are tired and burnt out and considering a, a change in career. And so I think what we're seeing here in the territory is happening nationwide. We need to do what we can to retain our own staff and even to recruit back persons who are talented and qualified and would love to return home and work in the territory by offering um, competitive salaries and by offering a, a great organization to work in. Um, and so that's what we're striving to do here at Schneider Regional to kind of combat that loss. Um, and we encourage anybody who's listening that's interested in joining our team to please reach out to us, reach out to our human resources team. Um, and, and, and please come back home and, and, and join us in taking care of our own. As we come to the near end of the show, please share with the public how they can learn more about Schneider Regional Medical Center and its efforts in meeting the healthcare needs of Virgin Islanders. We would love for you to get involved with Schneider Regional and follow Schneider Regional. We have a Facebook page, which we try to keep updated and active. We also have a pretty robust website, uh, SchneiderRegionalMedicalCenter.org. And so we invite you know the listening public to check us out on Facebook, view our website. If you need additional assistance from us, you can always give us a call. Our main number is 340-776-8311. Um, and we really appreciate and enjoy getting feedback from the public and from people who have had services here. We want to work to improve um, the care that we give. We want to build back that confidence in care that we give here. As you know, we all live here and we're the only hospital, so we all depend on our services. If any one of us has a trauma or a car accident, we need to be able to come here. We want to come to a great hospital. So we want to make our hospital the best hospital that any small island can have. And we're working to do that every day. And so we welcome your feedback um, as to what we can do better. And we're going to continue to push to be the best we can be. Excellent. Well, thank you, Attorney Comision, for all the great work you've been doing at Schneider Regional Medical Center for a long time, even before becoming the interim CEO when you were chief legal counsel of, of the institution. You've always done great work. I've always admired your work and, and the work of your entire team. So thank you for all that you do for the people of St. Thomas and the entire Virgin Islands. And we hope to have you back on another show with us in the near future. Thank you so much, Mr. DeBerry Schuster. And I can't get off without really thanking our team. Our, every member of our staff is critical to patient care from the doctor, the nurse, the IT person, the housekeeper, everybody who works with us plays a big role in the care we give to the community. And we really have some heroes working with us here at Schneider Regional. And so we thank really our team, our staff for the good work they do. Thank you. And thanks for yeah. having me today. Thank you. A heartfelt thanks to, to your entire team. This yeah. has been Troy Deshabir Schuster, State Director of AARP in the Virgin Islands, in conversation with attorney Tina Comision, interim CEO of the Schneider Regional Medical Center and the Myra Keating Smith Clinic. Thank you for joining us. Good day.